What's up guys, Justin here with TheRealTimeEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to quickly create a walkthrough animation in Unreal Engine and export it to a video file. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is specifically designed to teach you how to animate a camera moving inside of a level and how to export a video from that. I haven't seen any other just like simple videos on this, so I thought I'd just make one. Um, but what we wanna do is that's all we're gonna do. Nothing is gonna move other than the camera. So the first thing we want to do is we need to add, if we go into our content folder of our level, and um, you need to create a folder for videos or cinematics or something like that. And then within here, there's actually a takes folder that's dated. But basically what I want to do is I want to right click in here and under animation, I want to create a level sequence actor right here. So we're just going to add this and call it level sequence. And we're just going to call this walkthrough right here. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to contain all the information about the walkthrough that we're creating. So um, you're gonna be able to edit this using the sequencer, which you can go to window cinematics and we can turn on sequencer right here um, in order to do that. So there is another option here for the take recorder, which we're not going to worry too much about for right now. Um, we just wanna have the sequencer active. And if you double click on this object, notice how it's going to open up um, our walkthrough sequence inside of the sequencer right here. And you can use this view in order to control your different cameras and other objects inside of your scene. Specifically, we're gonna focus on cameras. And so now what we can do is we can either drag a Cine camera actor in here, or there's an option in here for create a new camera and set it as the current camera cut. And let's go ahead and do this the other way just so you kind of know how to do it. So if we drag a Cine camera actor into our scene like this, we're basically adding a camera to our scene, right? Unreal engine is basically set up where the cameras act like real life cameras. So notice how they actually have like a 35 millimeter zoom, um, a kind of film, all of that different stuff, right? And you can adjust all of that on your camera settings over here. We're not going to worry too much about any of that for right now. Um, what we want to do is we want to take this camera and we want to rotate it, right? So I'm going to rotate it. Um, it's going to be should be about 270 degrees right here. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna create a view of our camera flying through this scene like this, right? So you can kind of see a preview of what that's gonna look like right here. But what we wanna do now is we wanna set our sequence down here to track that camera. So we wanna click on the option for track right here and we wanna to go to the option for actor to sequencer, right? Remember that the camera is considered an actor in Unreal Engine. And so we just wanna find that on here. Notice how it does tell me that I can add that right here, or you can also do a search for Cine Camera Actor. And in this case, it's in here as Cine Camera Actor 20 because there were some camera views that were built in that I deleted out. Um, but notice how what this has done is this has basically brought our camera actor into our scene right here. Right? So if I click on this, notice how I can adjust things having to do with the camera, and I can also add a keyframe. And so what a keyframe is, is basically a point over time, right? So I could actually set this where my camera aperture changes in my view. So I could actually keyframe my aperture in here. I don't really want to do that, but um, I could. So I could also adjust something like my focal length. So if my focal length was like 45, notice how my lower focal length is going to let me see less. Um, so it's gonna be more, um, it, the field of view isn't quite as wide. So you can keyframe those different things in here to change them over the, over the course of a scene. But more importantly for what we're doing, you can also keyframe the transformation of your scene. So what that means is that means that if we click on this little drop down right here and remember that we're editing our camera actor, notice how I can keyframe things like the location, rotation, and scale. And so what we wanna do is we wanna keyframe this location. So we basically wanna say, okay, at the beginning of this animation or at zero, 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 save the transformations associated with this camera. Notice how I get little dots in here. So each one of those dots is going to be associated with a value, right? So we've keyframed a value of 810 in our camera location right here. So um, in our X camera location. Now, 
What we want to do is we want to adjust our camera location at five seconds so that the camera has moved forward. And so you can either do that by adjusting the values in here, or what I like to do is there's an option in here to lock our camera to viewport. And what that means is that means that when I click on this, this is going to lock our camera view to whatever view is in our viewport. Well, in this situation, right, in five seconds, I want my camera to now be at this location right here. So notice how because we have this locked, our camera moved along with our viewport. Well, then we can go down and we can keyframe our camera location or our camera transformations by clicking the add key right here. So now I have two keyframes right here. And so what's going to happen is over five seconds, my camera is going to move from this location to this location right here. So if I was to click the play button, notice how it's going to actually animate the transition between those two locations. And so that's basically created a five second long animation right here. So um, notice how at the moment, everything outside of that five seconds is kind of like shaded darker. So basically what that means is that means that at the moment, this green line right here sets the beginning of our animation and this red line sets the end of our animation. So if I click and drag this to four seconds and then I click play, notice how this animation is only going to run to four seconds. So you can also drag it to the right if you want to make it longer, or you can also drag this to a location right here. You can right click and you can click on set in time right here. So probably the fastest way to do this is say you wanted this to be a 10 second long animation. You could actually come over here and type in a value of 10 seconds. That's going to set the location of your uh, selected time in here. And then you can right click on it and click set in time. So right now what I have is I have a camera that from zero to five seconds is going to move. And then from there, it's not actually going to move, right? All right. So now what I want to do is I want to have a second camera in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new camera. So I'm just going to um, just add a new Cine camera actor right here. So I'm just going to drag it into my scene. And we'll go ahead and we'll kind of adjust this so it's showing what we want it to show. So there's some faster ways to do this, but I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to rotate it like this. So we've got kind of a diagonal view right here. And so now what we've got is we've got an additional camera that's in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this camera two. So I'm just going to adjust it. I'm gonna hit F2 and I'm gonna type in camera two like this so that we can find it really easily. But now what we need to do is we need to add it to our video sequencer, right? Because it's not in this list right now. So to do that, I just wanna click on this button right here for track. I wanna add camera two to my sequencer, right? And so right now, all this is is a camera that's sitting in my scene. It's not actually doing anything. Well, what I want to do is I want to keyframe this camera so that at um, five seconds, it's located in this location. So I'm just going to keyframe the transformation. And I'm going to make sure that I have this locked to my viewport. But at 10 seconds, I want my camera to have moved down here. And I want it to have rotated like this, right? And remember that those are actually being set automatically because I have this locked to my viewport. So now I'm gonna keyframe this transformation right here. So what that means is that means if I click play, notice how I have another camera that's moving like this, right? So now I have this video sequence that has two cameras keyframed in it, but notice how if I was to play this whole thing, so if I go to my camera cuts and click on lock viewport to camera cuts, that's going to show me in my viewport what this animation looks like. But if I click the play button, notice how my animation stops at five seconds, right? My overall clip is 10 seconds long, but this second view isn't really giving me anything. And so what we need to do here is we need to add our second camera to our camera cuts object right here. And by the way, if you don't have a camera cuts object, um, you can just click on track and you can add a camera cut track right here so that you have this. All right, so now we've got the second camera set up and keyframed. What we want to do is we want to set our timestamp to five seconds right here. And then we want to go into our camera cuts object and click on the plus camera option. And in this case, we're going to add that second camera that we added, camera two. So it's going to be here on the list. And so we're going to click on this. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to add this camera view to our camera cuts line right here. And so now if I was to click play and notice how I still have this locked to my camera cuts. But if I click play, notice how it's going to transition to that second view inside of Unreal Engine as well. And so you can use this to add as many different camera cuts as you want to inside of your scene in order to create a video. And so now I've generally got this set up the way that I want it to be, right? I've got my camera um, kind of flying around in my scene. Well, now what I want to do is I want to export this to a video file. And so the way that we can export this to a video file is we can come down here and click on this option for render this movie to a video or image frame sequence right here. This is going to give us some options. We don't need to worry about them too much for right now. Um, we're going to export this as a video sequence, not as an image sequence. So you can set things like your resolution. So if you want this to be larger or smaller, you can select those options here, um, as well as setting your output director directory, which is where this is going to go. And by default, I think it puts it in your um, actual project file. And then we're not going to worry too much about the rest of these right now. You could export these with a custom start and end frame. Um, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. But when we're done with all these, we can click on the option to capture movie. And it's going to ask what we want to save. We're going to go ahead and save our model. But you can see how this is going to go through and this is going to capture that animation from your screen. And so then we're just going to go find this project. And it's going to have saved it in the saved folder right here under video captures. And in this case, I've exported this a couple times, but we're gonna go ahead and open this one up right here. And so if I play this, notice how this has given me a complete exported video file of my walkthrough inside of Unreal Engine. So this can be very effective for creating architectural walkthroughs or other things like that where your camera moves in Unreal Engine. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you'd like to see more Unreal Engine tutorials like this, um, other animation tutorials, that kind of thing. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.